Welcome to the ABN Network. This is the new hard-hitting format for the Fully Charged Show News, where we're going to be looking at electrificational ground transport and renewable energy in constant stories that we're going to be pumping out as often as we can. So, what is the ABN Network? Well, ABN stands for Almost Breaking News. Okay, I'll action that. And what, the, what that is, is we're just trying to create more news content. And it could be, stand for anything, ABN. It could be uh, uh, absolute bonkers news nuggets or uh, alternative battery neurosis. You come up with something, but try and keep it family friendly. We'd really appreciate that. Coming up on today's Almost Breaking News, VW are actually going to make the fabulous looking electric camper we featured a few years ago. Maybe. Eventually. Uh, it's now cheaper, we've discovered, to build and run new renewable energy systems than to just run existing, already paid for, coal or gas plants. We're going to look at a fully electric and self-steering container ship. What the what? And how will Norwegian reservoirs power homes in the UK? All this and more coming to you on Almost Breaking News. This has come straight from the room at the top. A fully charged special announcement. Now you might have noticed that the Fully Charged show has gone a bit Dutch lately. We've covered cycling in cities, really big vehicle-to-grid projects, gas-free houses and solar-powered electric car sharing. And up next, we're going to be getting my Nissan Leaf back from its long-term Amsterdam lockdown. Now, we've known for a long time that the Netherlands is a clean tech leader and so we're delighted to be launching fully charged live Europe at the RAI in Amsterdam in 2022. As well as electric cars, this show will have a distinctly Dutch flavour with dozens of relevant live sessions and lots of technologies on display including bikes, boats and of course beautiful heat pumps. Now, we'll even have the biggest and best brands in attendance, and we are expecting thousands of attendees from all across Europe. We would love it if you could join us. Fully Charged Live is back and bigger than ever. Get your tickets now to the world's number one electric vehicle and clean energy live show, featuring all manner of electric vehicles, tons of test drives, live theatre sessions, interactive home energy experiences, and so much more. See you there. And now, back to almost breaking, fully charged news. So finally, after years of waiting, the VW ID Buzz is to be produced in Hanover from next year, 2022. And, it, and this is being produced in a cargo and passenger version. And then, and please don't hold your breath, the long-awaited electric camper version is set to follow as the VW ID California. So that's going to start three years after the production of the ID. But I, it's not, they're not even going to start making it until 2025. Whatever. It, it, I'm sure it's going to be lovely. It probably won't look like the prototype we featured on the Fully Charged show way back when. Uh, but it will get here eventually, and the, the, as to the cost and the range and the battery size, that's anyone's guess. But it does come kitted out as a camper, with its own little kitchen, a little sink, a little cooker, and it's got a lovely fold-out bed. What more could you want? And now a couple of stories about the overall cost, the financial cost of renewables. It's now been reported that it is cheaper to build and operate new large-scale wind farms or solar, solar farms than it is to just run an existing coal or gas-fired power plant. That's the latest analysis from Bloomberg New Energy Finance. They say that even with the risk of rising commodity prices, a new solar park or wind farm is still competitive with existing coal or gas plants. And this is, this would this is the case with 46% of the world's population. So very close to half the world's population would really benefit from that. And there's another report that backs that up from the Oxford Martin School about how the world could save over 20 trillion dollars on energy costs 
by switching to renewables. Well, that's easy to say. Who the hell are the Oxford Martin School? Well, it's a research institute connected to Oxford University which aims to find solutions to the great problems facing the human race. Environment, health, economics, society and, of course, energy, a key component in all our activities. They argue a swift and dramatic shift to green energy would save hundreds of billions of dollars a year and that by around 2080 it would have saved a total of at least 26 trillion dollars in energy costs. I'm quoting from their report here. They, they say the manufacturing costs of green energy uh, power plants have fallen sharply while efficiency has increased considerably as wind turbines become taller with longer blades, components become cheaper and more effective and solar panels convert ever more sunlight into electricity. And at the same time, batteries and other forms of mass energy storage are rapidly improving, meaning that, meaning that the excess electricity produced can be saved in increasingly large quantities and used when the wind stops blowing or it's night time. Now, there are links to all these reports in the description beneath these, this video, and they are really interesting if you've got time to have a quick read of those. And here's a sign that things really are beginning to shift in all aspects of our lives. The world's first fully electric, 100% electric, self-steering container ship, not boat, ship, is owned by a Norwegian fertilizer maker, Yara, and is preparing to navigate Norway's southern coast and play its part in the country's plans to clean up the, the whole industry. The Yara Birkeland is an 80 meter long ship which will replace lorry haulage between Yara's plant in Porsgrunn in southern Norway and its export port in Brevik, about 14 kilometers away by road. But they're going to be moving all on ship so you don't have all those trucks on the road. Now they've taken this technological leap to show it is possible. The company is suggesting that there are many routes uh, all around the world where this kind of technology could be used, the same type of ship. Now, to start with, the ship's only going to be two, doing two journeys a week to start with. It has a capacity to move 120 of those really big 20-foot-long containers full of fertiliser at a time. And it's powered by batteries provided by a long-established Swiss company called Le Clanche. The batteries house 7 megawatt hours. And those are fitted in eight different battery rooms on the ship. 7 megawatt hours is uh, the equivalent of about 100 Tesla Model 3s if you piled all their batteries together. Here's a bit of tech news that could really make a difference to grid constraint when it comes to installing new chargers. Now, I saw something a bit like this at the BP Pulse headquarters last year, but I've never seen one in the wild. So grid capacity is one of the complexities facing companies installing rapid chargers to help keep up with a mind-boggling increase in electric vehicles on the roads in the UK. It's the same all around the world, but the UK is really struggling with its charging infrastructure. Anyone who's got an electric car here will confirm that. So we need all the help we can get. Now, there might be space and permission to install charges, say, in a car park or a rest area, but there simply isn't a large enough grid connection to support those charges. Now, a company called Freewire has developed a rapid charging system with built-in batteries in the same big box. This requires a much lower capacity grid connection. They can trickle charge the battery housed in the charge for 24 hours a day, ready to dump a load of electrons when a car gets plugged in. Nice. I like that. Now, I've done a load of positive, hopeful, progressive and optimistic stories on almost breaking news. So here's something for balance. Really depressing. You know, just to really make you miserable. This is a report from The Guardian in the UK. Now, when Royal Dutch Shell published its annual environmental report in April this year, it boasted very proudly that it was investing heavily in renewable energy. The oil giant committed to installing hundreds of thousands of charging stations for electric vehicles around the world to help offset the harm caused by burning fossil fuels. Now, I used a Shell rapid charger just last week. It was easy to use and it worked. That's very nice. That's really good that they're there. But on the same day this report was released, 
Shell issued a separate report, probably with a little bit less fanfare, revealing that its single largest donation to political lobbying groups last year was made to the American Petroleum Institute. This is one of the United States' most powerful trade organizations, which drives the oil industry's relationship with Congress. It's the single most powerful lobby group in the USA. Now, critics accused Shell and other major oil firms of using the API as a cover for the industry. So they might not want to say what they're exactly doing, so they use the API and everybody can hate the API. But actually, the API represents Shell and Exxon and, and, and BP and all those companies. They all give, might give money to this group. And this is a this is this a hugely powerful and influential trade group. It works behind the scenes in Congress to stall or weaken environmental legislation. So earlier this year, an Exxon lobbyist in Washington was secretly recorded by Greenpeace describing API as the industry's whipping boy. So it's just a direct public and political attention and criticism away from individual companies. Very clever. So it's just a little reminder that there really are people who are doing everything they can to delay, delay, and, delay, and, delay, and, delay and delay the transition away from fossil fuels. And they've got a lot of money and a lot of influence. So when you see a story about batteries being dirty or electric cars being powered by coal, it's worth remembering who's paying for and planting those stories. Now, lastly, a bit of happy news about a big fat wire. Norwegian reservoirs are currently powering homes in Great Britain as the world's longest subsea power cable has been switched on in a boost to renewables and tight energy supplies this winter. The 724-kilometre North Sea Link is the sixth of a growing network of electricity interconnectors between Great Britain and its European neighbours. We still do talk to each other a bit. To trade energy and adapt to the grid's increasing reliance on the variable output of wind, solar and hydro. Now, this cable was first tested in June and the copper cable along the seabed of the North Sea will operate at half its potential for three months before reaching its 1,400 megawatt capacity. And that is enough to power 1.4 million homes. Quite a lot of homes. Now, the power is expected to initially mostly flow from Norway to the UK, which generates almost all its electricity from hydro. And that will come over here to the UK where electricity prices are higher. Now, the link may eventually be used to export electricity from our offshore wind farms, and we'll send that up to Norway for storage at pumped hydro facilities in their mountains. They've got a lot of mountains. And pump, then we will pump water uphill using cheap off-peak electricity, and then we'll release it when electricity is more expensive or there's not enough wind or solar uh, as is needed. Now, the interconnector is a joint venture with the UK's National Grid and Norway's Stetnet, and it's a feat of engineering made possible by a 2.3 kilometer tunnel through a mountain before it even gets to the sea. But it is far from alone. So there's going to be a new cable running through the channel tunnel, which switches, early on, uh, switches on early in 2022. I've seen one of the cables through there. They are really big and chunky. It's followed by one from Denmark to the UK in 2023 and from Germany to the UK in 2024. So for now, Great Britain is a net importer, getting almost a tenth of the entire electricity supply from these cables from European countries, mainly nuclear and wind. That's where the power is coming from. But rapid growth in our offshore wind farms and a narrowing of the gap between its electricity prices in the UK and those of its neighbours mean that the electricity industry expects it will be a net exporter from the UK by 2025. So we've got the best wind resources uh, in, in the whole of Europe around the UK because we've got a lot of sea, quite shallow sea and a hell of a lot of wind. <clears throat> Southern Europe has the best solar resources and Norway is a fantastic place for hydroelectricity. So the more connected we are, the better we can share these things and the greener everyone can be. So hopefully it's a win-win if we plan it correctly. So that's all. Uh, please do let us know what you think of those stories. Leave some comments there or on Twitter or whatever, any, however you like to communicate with us. We're always interested to hear. Tell us if you've got some other ideas for stories we could cover or subjects that we could cover. Or if you've got a specific story, let us know and we'll have a look and see if we can do a bit of research and put it on a future episode of 
almost breaking news. Well, there we go. That's it for 2021. It's been an amazing year for the Fully Charged Show. I just want to thank everyone who supported us through this year, all the, pe the amazing people on, who support us on Patreon, our YouTube members, just you for watching. Everyone who subscribed to the show. We've had tens of thousands of new subscribers this year. It's fantastic. And all that you know, really important stuff. I'm going to stop. It's just It's a Bristol lady collecting cups. <laughs> Yeah. What's, one, what's your favourite episode this year? <laughs> and I just want to, you know, do a shout out for everyone that's working on the show. The crew that you don't see who are behind the scenes, amazing. They've worked so hard, they've done so much amazing stuff. They really, they go above and beyond the call of duty. And I really want to thank Dan for the home show. I want to thank Helen, uh, DK in Korea, Elliot in China, uh, Andy here, um, uh, uh, Maddie, Maddie Mo, amazing stuff. Uh, what about Jack? Yeah, you, I know you all love Jack, so I have to thank Jack, even though he's incredibly talented, tall, handsome, good looking, charming. And uh, there's that old bloke as well, he does some stuff as well, he's, he's all right, but anyway. We're gonna have a quick look now at some of the highlights from 2021. And if you want to see the entire highlight reel, Patreon supporters can see it on their, their Patreon page in its full intense glory. So happy Christmas. We'll see you in 2022. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. world has changed beyond all recognition and we really need to make sure it doesn't go back to exactly how it was before all this started. Finally, a little bit more unlocked. We can go places, we can go and see things. I really want to do that, but I haven't got any mates. I've got no friends to do a road trip with. You can't do a road trip on your own because that's just a journey. I need someone to help me. I mean, young man, young man, hello. Can you drive? A little bit. Roll VT. Face meltingly fast. Jack Scarlett has joined us. Thank you, Jack. Oh, let's go fast. Oh, okay. Please welcome to Fully Charged. DK Kim from Korea. <laughs> the speed at which this is happening is just amazing. Thank goodness we've got Elliot. This is incredibly impressive. Pretty fast. A car nerd mecca. It's time to get a battery. Come on. I like that. 
Where am I? I'm surrounded by thousands of electric cars. Anyway, yeah. Thankfully, some do still stand out. I want my electric car to be different to all the other rubbish. Yeah, I've fallen in love with it, and I've only been driving it for a day. This is pretty exclusive. Electric city car. Nice. We like that. The door handle, which looks like a whale's fin splashing out of the water. Have they done anything about those annoying rubby buttons? How about you stop making us pay extra for our cars to not look rubbish? Maybe? Diesel is dead technology. Yeah. Bye-bye, ordinary people. Can you tell me what you have for breakfast, please? Pure cocaine. All oh, right, oh, here we go. You're trying it, aren't you? It's basically a battery which made big old bus. Just briefly translate that for people who excuse me. Made from girders. Made from yeah. girders. If he got us. <laughs> Welcome to the fully charged introduction to electric vans. A filthy, toxic stink. I think that's well dodgy. <coughs> You're a human being. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, these robots can create a new creature, wow. a non biological creature for yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Weird. We're the sponsor We're of the a football sponsor team. Of a football team. Come on! If you say open butthole, apparently it opens the charging port. You always open up fascinating doors that I didn't even know were there. What about dogs? Oh, yes, sir. No, I'm very happy. I'm super happy. Here we go. <laughs> Wing mirrors. Almost forgot the name there. Oh, this is unusual. You could actually properly camp in this. Could a couple of little beds in there. Little kitchenette there. Toilet at the back, yeah. shower. But also you can have a little fold-out solar panels there to charge it. I'm thinking that you know, the whole roof is one big solar yeah. panel. Oh yeah. I've written down <laughs> loads of the most annoying and pathetic questions. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. What about the lithium man? The people want the solar. The government in India is hell-bent on burning more coal. I wonder why that is. Could it have anything to do with money? It's not a crossover. Oh! I mean, I've driven a lot worse. Let's say that. I've driven a lot worse than this. Standard, fully charged Llewellyn. Yeah. I think, frankly, is wizardry. A fully charged car, a full tank, essentially. What this is, is urine. And look, I, I'm just going for it, mate. Let me think on that for a moment. Yes, of course it makes sense! Hi, is that the fossil fuel industry? Yeah, you can retire. These testing times have shown that sometimes you just you just need to go with the flow. Let's get those dogs in. Come on, we've got to get to doggy school. Yes, come on. I love this. I love a model. I love that. I've Don't never seen a model pilot. I won't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words for this car. Um, tell your mates, tell your friends, tell your family. So you could really have a nice nap in here. I've been given the keys. A good doggy. It's completely barking mad, but wonderful. I'm a stiff one, so I can get to the club in the right the frame of mind. Ooh. You followed a group of swans that migrate from Siberia to the UK, and you followed them in a powered paraglider. Indeed, yes. Why would you put urine in a fuel cell? Things are being shaken up good and proper. There's no getting over that this is a big car. I mean, look at it, it's fantastic. It's very nice. Simple. Well, I'm very much hoping that I am still around in 2050. I will be 94. <laughs> You'll be there. <laughs> Everything on this channel has got to be lovely. Ah, das ist der Raupen Scheißgrün. Isn't it beautiful, isn't it? It's like poetry. What that actually means is green caterpillar poo. Squeaky bum time. Green! Greeny, bogey colour. Combustion engines. <laughs> yeah. These cars are flying off the shelves if they kept cars on shelves. Oh, hello. Oh, good morning. Window, door. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh Lord. We're going to give away a prize. Oh, he loves me a bit of cheddar. Sipping electricity. An e-scooter. They've come full circle. Hello there. Hello. It's a bit snug. Some fake tan little on Fox News. I hate Apple car stories. Hello, I'm an Apple car story. She's not dead. She's the Terminator. She will not die. Oh, 
Hello, this is us putting our hands up for a sneak peek. You know, when you've got a moment. Thank you. It's off. On full. All day. Not stop. Down. Off. I'm not going to squeeze it too much today because it's wet. Oh no, don't. See, you're the chefs for the microbes. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Look at that. Check number plates. I'm a Czech poet. I will now write a love poem about depression and anxiety. Preparing our little mixture. Embarrassingly small nubbin, it's about that size. <laughs> See it, we'll get, we'll get a close up shot of this. <laughs> I haven't quite worked this out. I really hope this works. Did you know that some spiders keep frogs as pets? I'm slightly obsessed with sewage. A little like is nice. Here's a song that I made just for you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Well, there we go. That kind of sums up what we've been saying on Fully Charged for the last 11 or so years. These aren't just carbon neutral houses. These are carbon negative houses. They actually take out more carbon from the atmosphere than is produced building. Well, this isn't just science fiction. You kind of need to talk about it as a whole, you know, how you insulate your property, how you heat your property, when and where you use your, your energy as well. These cars are built as electric cars from the day they were sketched out by the designer. The tide has already turned. Today, it's more about these batteries that are powering an electrified world. This is a massive geothermal drilling rig. This is drilling deep, deep, deep down into the Earth's crust. We've built as much renewables in the last three years in Australia as we did in the 30 years before that. The transition's moving pretty quickly. We don't make money until somebody stops putting fuel in a car and starts putting in electricity in a car. The three big things are we look at how we power ourselves, we look at how we travel and we look at what we eat. We're the gateway to a more sustainable mobility. We are an intelligent species, we are good at problem solving if we want to. It is amazing what the human race is capable of achieving with technology. Go electric highway, go grid surf, yo! Covid has been an accelerator for change and actually people are a lot more open-minded now. This is a subject that people are more and more interested in than how can I actually lower the carbon emissions at my house? I think you've got to keep watching fully charged because, you know, that's where it all happens, electrically. Yeah, you might have noticed in the last year, Robert's done quite a lot of episodes. So, that's all. Thank you for watching. And as always, if you have been, f*** f that up. This is really another industrial revolution, but a really good one that might not mash up the planet we all have to live on. What they're doing here is, I think, incredibly brave and incredibly important. Try and steer the ship of the German automotive industry in a positive direction. This is the world we live in. We've got to learn to live with it. If it's better for the environment, why aren't you doing it? Why haven't you got an electric vehicle? Put those words into action. Our 12-year-old daughter came home one day 
and decided to say, tell us that she wanted to study global sustainable development. We were absolutely sold on the fact that we had to do something. We had right. to change our lives for going forward to preserve the planet. We're all one big organic engine together. Oh, this, the world is much, much weirder than I thought. I'm an old bloke. Now, some of you may not have noticed, but I am. I actually um, cried. Do you remember? You? <laughs> I, <laughs> so <laughs> dramatic, but because I, I thought the same. Oh, there's a fancy render, yeah, yeah. something We've that will never get that. built, yeah. and like nice idea and everything. Then got there, and I was like, oh my god, there's people that want it as well, like on a grand scale. What an amazing sight this is. The stuff we cover in Fully Charged is always two to three years ahead of when it becomes noticeable. In one way, it's just the beginning. What will the world look like by 2050 if we don't act now? I mean, some of us might not be here, uh, sort of me probably, but they will. It's really important that we are in an emergency. So isn't the resource that we really, really need to worry about, above all else, time? Um, what else do we do? Goodness.